What's up, HHS staff? Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about naming con conventions within Google Docs and Google, Google Drive. Um, this will allow your students to submit their written assign or excuse me, their typed online assignments that they create through Google Drive uh, paper or paperlessly, um, which is going to allow you to you know not kill as many trees as well as. Uh, you, if you want, you can leave comments on drafts in Google uh, on Google Docs, or you could screencast feedback from Google Docs as well. Um, the why is less important because I think there are people out there that want that knowledge. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I am going to show you uh, how to do this. Um, I'm going to log into one of my 18,000 Gmail addresses first, um, and then I'll talk about the naming conventions. <laughs> Um, I guess the, the first thing with the naming conventions is you need to be really, really, really specific with the students. They must spell every single thing exactly right, because if they don't, you're not going to be able to find their document. Um, Sarah Press and I are going to share one single folder because of shared humanities assignments. So I'm going to show you our naming convention, because even if it's just for a single period, um, it'll be it'll be less complicated, but just as searchable as what we're doing. So you're going to tell the students, and I'm right now acting uh, in a from a the student account, um, you're, you're going to tell your students to create a Google folder, and then the naming convention is as follows: uh, you want them to type in per and then whatever period they have you. So, so like for my fake student, they're going to have Sarah first period, so it'll be per one, and then they're going to add an e for English, and then a space which is important, and then per four h because they have fourth period history. So the name of this folder so far. PER1E to show they have first period English, PER4H to show they have fourth period history. And then the t title of that folder, and again, there's going to be another space, is Lindgrenstriker.carl. So last name dot first name. Okay? So you're going to have your students create that folder. And after that folder is created, they're going to click on that folder, which is right here. And over in this little drop down arrow here, they're going to click and they're going to share this folder with somebody. Okay. Now this is where you're going to give the students your email address and if the onus is on them to, sh to create the folder correctly and to share it with you. So you're going to add your, the, the, the student will then add your email address, so I'll type in my school email, or my school Gmail address. Alright, and now that folder is shared with me. Shared a folder with myself, whatever. Um, so now I will be able to access this folder. Um, from my school account. Now that's the folder title. Now for the paper title, it's there's just kind of one other step of complexity. Um, so let's create a document. And for the naming convention for the documents, what you're going to do is it's the exact same beginning. So per one e space per four h. So first period English, fourth, fourth period history. The paper title uh, for this paper. This is the Locke paper. So John Locke, L O C K E. And then last name, first name. So Lindgrenstriker.carl. Right. So again, period, space, and again, Sarah and I have two periods. And then paper title. And again, this paper title must be, excuse me, this paper title, right, here must be spelled correctly. This must be spelled correctly. And this must be spelled correctly. Otherwise, this is not going to be searchable for you. You're not going to be able to find it. So you're going to. That's going to be the the naming convention that the students use in the document. Okay, great. It's saved. Now what the students are going to do is they're going to type all sorts of awesomeness, and then when they're done, they will go and they're going to take this document, which hopefully will have a title at some point, um, and they're going to drag this document into their shared folder with you. Now the reason that this is a great way of doing this is if the student makes a mistake on this, the mistake is on the students. If they don't name their folder right, that's their fault, not your fault. If they don't enter your email address right, that's their fault, not your fault. So that puts the onus on them to be really, really specific and precise with their naming conventions. And you need to be make sure that you're stressing the, the importance of that. So. I've created my document. Again, it should say this title. Um, my internet's a little bit slow right now. And I've created my folder. I'm going to log out of this account, and I'll be back in just a second with the teacher account. So signing out. So I'm back on my teacher account, and I'm going to sign in. Boom. 
Now, how does this look when I type it in? So let's say I'm looking for um, people in fourth period history. Whoops, sorry, I clicked the right thing. I'm looking for people in fourth period history. who wrote the John Locke paper. I hit enter. Okay, now only one person showed up here, but that's because there's only one paper here. This would allow you to take all of fourth period history's papers and drag them into your own um, folder over here. So you could just take this and drag it here, and then you would know that you had to grade it. Um, then the other thing that's cool about this is if I go back to my drive, um, if you type in period one English and lock, it's also searchable by that. So if I know I'm grading Sarah's first period English class and I know their, the, the title of the paper, I just type in that, the title of the, the, the period of the English class and the paper title, and magically it will show up and can be dragged into my folder and I will be good to go for the rest of the year or at least I'll be good to go for grading that paper. So I hope that helped. Uh, if you have further questions, uh, clearly Sarah and I would be happy to talk to you.